Have you ever considered how foods like M&M's and Ben's original rice are created? Well, there's a science behind that. And the chief science officer of Mars Foods, Abigail Stevenson, joins us today to talk about the science behind food. Welcome, Abigail. Thank you very much. Great to be here. So am I right about the science that uh, there actually is science between hardening the chocolate on the outside so it doesn't melt in your hand, right? Yes, there is. Um, it's, it's a special technique um, uh, for enrobing the chocolate inside that, that uh, has a lower risk of melting than the inner uh, right. chocolate. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, science has been part of uh, the, the Mars uh, business for, for a long time, ever since the, the company was uh, founded in 1911. Science has really um, underpinned the business and the way that decisions are made within the business as well. Mars has been in, in, in our world and our life for a long, long time. And uh, what I think is interesting is that most of us consumers don't think about science when it comes to food. What are the particular challenges about that? Well, I think food food is a very emotional topic as well as as well as being very functional and delivering essential nutrients that we need to to be healthy and to to live a life. It also fulfills many other roles in our lives. It's it's part of our social life, it's part of our family life, and and it's essential, you know, our planet provides the food. And increasingly we see a real connection between human health, sustainability, and the health of our planet. Uh, there's a huge movement now to to push uh, young women into STEM programs, science, technology, what's the E for? Help me. Engineering. Engineering and math. <laughs> and math. So there you go. You can tell that I was not a STEM student, uh, but there has been quite a push to move women into into the into science and into STEM projects. Tell me why that's important for young women to to look look into. You obviously did it as well. I did, and uh, I came into science because I'd always had a passion for for science. My father was a, a huge supporter of mine and opened my eyes up to the natural world, and I have always had a passion for science. Um, I've always been curious as well, and I think um, science uh, and the STEM uh, kind of opportunities are really diverse for women. And certainly in Mars, I have always found out that uh, they're a company that um, embraces, fully embraces equality, diversity, inclusion. And today in research and development within Mars, we have more women than men. We have some really interesting statistics around the, the diversity within our organization and research and development um, really seems to be a place where women can thrive in Mars. How do you encourage young people to get involved in your line of work when people say, oh, what are you going to be when you grow up? I'm going to be a doctor, a lawyer or whatever, uh, even a newscaster. But rarely do they think about being a food scientist. How do you encourage young people to think in your yeah. direction? Well, I was much the same 30 years ago when I was looking for my first full time job on a leaving university. I was looking around for exciting opportunities. And, and Mars provided me one as a research scientist. I started in our pet care business, actually working um, on, on pet foods and the next innovations in improving pet health. And little did I know at that time that I would be with the same company for 30 years. And over that time, I've had the opportunity to work in such diverse areas of science, as well as the pet science. I've worked on food safety science. And today I work on science of the future in areas like packaging, um, sustainability, the new technologies we're going to need to meet the, the, the future of our business by 2050. And never would I have imagined when I first joined Mars that I would have the opportunities that, that I've had within the company. So my advice would be to, to really um, open, open your eyes to opportunities and think very, really broadly. As a scientist, Mars is a fantastic company with such diverse opportunities. You're involved in something called the uh, Advanced Research Institute. What is that specifically? Yes. Um, as part of my science group, we have a, a team dedicated to exploring the future frontiers of science, the real emerging science and technology that is often a decade or more, even longer away from application. But they are the potential solutions to some of these grand challenges we face in topics like packaging, um, in crops of the future and sustainable supply chains, food and innovation of the future. 
um, different ways to, to produce ingredients. And my team are exploring that new frontier, really looking for those sparks that will fuel innovation of the future within our organization. It's a very exciting place to be. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's so exciting. And, and you consider the fact that that uh, you, the area that you're in touches every single human being on the planet. You're, you're not just yeah. you're producing for a segment or, or demographic. It's really the whole world. Absolutely, it is. And we are part of food supply chains around the world. And we have a responsibility to think about future generations in the way that we, we do business. And it's really why um, you know, we, we think about the, the Mars purpose as um, you know, a better world tomorrow, really. How through the way we do business today, we create that better world tomorrow. Well, we started talking about M&Ms and look at how we just <laughs> vastly expanded the conversation to the globe. Uh, Abigail Stevenson, thank you so much. She is the Chief Science Officer joining us today. Thank you so much. We appreciate all the great work you're doing there at Mars and we appreciate so much your time today. You're very welcome. It was a pleasure.